hello guys welcome back to the channel welcome to another quick simple video right we are going to use power bi and try to just explore a data this is actually my expense data original expense data that i have been spending living here in germany as you see uh, april may uh, june and july data is there right so i have put almost 90% of all my expense this is how i take my notes uh, to you know kind of monitor and optimize my expense so we are going to open and just explore the data and see i've uh, attached the link to the data so you can use that to practice it yourself maybe the date column uh, might show a text data type for you here so just come here and change it to date right if it shows text you might need to do that one thing before and i've already uh, loaded the data so as you see i have the date uh, the shop right the name of the shop where that purchase was made what was the type was it a grocery expense was it a withdrawal from an atm was it a restaurant you know was it for a movie and so on right there are a lot of categories here and then what is the cost right i spent this is in euros month i just created an extra column so april is 4 may is 5 june is 6 and july is 7 very very straightforward now just let's try to explore the data right and also understand how i try to monitor and uh, optimize my expenses itself here in germany so i'll go here right uh, so there's no specific agenda we will just create an open ended table right uh, just to have a look right overall how is my spending going on right so i'll just select like the month and i don't want the sum right so i will remove and say don't summarize and i will see the total cost first an easy step right and if you notice something interesting here right all the four months it's it's between 1350 and 1400 right that seems super optimal right so my expense are very controlled it's almost in the same range uh, which i think it makes it easier to also control the expense so that is one observation we already make it's between 1350 and 1400 it very limited margin of difference across four different months this is one thing we directly uh, pick up from the data let me introduce another table right and just to get a feel of okay by category which is giving us the most expense overall right so i'm going to put in type and i'm also going to drag in the sum of cost right and here let's uh, sort by the cost right which would make sense if you notice over four months i think per month it's about 650 the rent so it's 2600 so rent and grocery right out of the 5500 rent and grocery are almost 3700 right so that's comfortably around uh, i mean much more than 60 percent so then we know that for example if the grocery i mean rent is going to be the same so if the grocery is optimal every month right it's very similar values then it's easy to control the expense because as you see all the others they're all very minor expense for like a four month period if you see okay uh, so we can have a look at some of the category maybe restaurant is also 300 right not a huge number but something is there so now we can go into these individual categories let's take a grocery and let's take restaurant and see why is it like such a number and is the pattern similar across months right so for that what i can do right again i'm just going to uh, make this smaller and uh, just move this a bit right and i want to introduce another quick table again right this is all just as you see uh, nothing but data exploration so let me put in the type right and also i want the month right i i want to not summarize it so i'll say don't summarize and have a look at the total cost okay but more importantly i also want to make sure i see specific categories look i know grocery so in grocery primarily go to the supermarket called uh, reve so let's see i think i i would rather need to pull in the shop right instead of the type so i'm going to remove the type and uh, yeah i think i can uh, filter for the shop right so let's go and see reve right across months how is the pattern and if you notice reve right which is one of the major chunks generally of the grocery expense you see it's 213 225 216 194 again in a very very tight range right so it's pretty much standardized uh, so I think that is why the grocery expense is almost stable every month because the amount I spend at Reve, which is the maximum contributor is very stable between 200 and 220 more or less right and even if we go and look at the uh, purchases generally right I can randomly choose a few months so Reve it's 45 sometimes it's 83 if we purchase for a couple of weeks or it's 63 right but overall over a month the number comes out to be around 200 220 right so we are able to standardize and optimize the grocery expense that's why it's standard right as you notice 
rent is always fixed as you know so grocery is also optimized because one of the major contributors here revve is standardized right so that way these two are controlled that is why you see each of the months is almost having very very similar costs right this is one way to control your expense choose the top two or three biggest contributors see which are the variable ones and try to optimize for the biggest contributor in that category so here my revve shopping is well optimized right let's have a look at another one uh, so we have a, a restaurant right so instead of the shop i will bring back the type itself right and uh, let's say i filter for uh, okay this is gone so i filter for a restaurant right let's see each month what's the contribution so you see uh, july was 62 but the other months was 94 95 and 60 right and if we have a, a look at the data i'm going to get back into the data so one of the common restaurants i go to is sarona bhavan so you see it's like 29 right like around 30 euro expense um, and it's 32 right so it looks like the average expense for a restaurant is around 30 so if i go three times a month it's like 90 plus two times a month is 60 but the per time visit value seems to be close to 30 which is again quite standardized which is also why you see like this it's not very close but restaurant also seems to have a pattern in terms of the spending and restaurant is the you know um fourth biggest contributor right insurance 375 and I'm pretty sure it's it's a standardized amount we pay. I think one month we didn't need to pay. Uh, but overall, if you see here, insurance is 125, right? We pay to TK and it's 125. It's, it's the same number, right? It's not going to be variable as well. So as you see, pretty much they're all controlled, right? Let's have a look at shopping, right? Which seems to be the fifth biggest contributor. So let me remove restaurant and look at shopping, how it's, it's there. And as you see, uh, uh, like it's usually like 60 70 50 right so 6 50 to 70 again a very tight range so i think the first month we didn't really do any additional shopping so it was very low but otherwise it's quite predictable again 50 to 70 right again put it within a tight range i think it's quite easy to optimize the expense and as you see expense are very similar across the four months right so the rest are all small numbers so it doesn't really matter a 30 euro 50 euro there doesn't go to impact much right so this is just like looking at the data getting a simple feel of the data and just telling a story right here we are not doing any deep analysis but then seeing why this is the case why is expense optimized look at one category which is one of the bigger contributors see which specific part is the biggest contributor in that category and i think you're all sorted right so if you're all living outside your house maybe in a different city like bangalore hyderabad i think you can use this method to optimize monitor your expense to make sure they are predictable and then it's easy to you know start making savings right one small thing i want to show you apart from all this right so sometimes they ask this in interviews so we have like the different dates let's say in each day we spend a, a certain amount of money how can we show the total money spent but for the previous day right is it even possible so in sql we use like lag function and i think python we use shift uh, same way what can we do in power bi right to achieve something like that so for this i'm just going to add a fourth table right just to show you how this works so let's say i pull in the date and i don't want all this hierarchy stuff right so i'll just go and simply pick the date uh, and i want to bring the total cost right sum of cost is already there now i want to see the previous cost right for each day how can we do that i can do a new measure okay i'm going to go and click it so maybe i can say previous day cost right equal to what we can do is we can say calculate okay and we have to just do sum of the cost right simple sum but on twist is we want to do it for each row for the previous day so i can say previous day of this uh, date column right the only twist you will notice in this data it will pick the actual previous day right and now if i bring this in here now you notice right if you notice for 1st April, there's no previous day, right? There's no 31st March data. For 3rd April, also previous day is blank because there's no data for 2nd April, right? Whereas for 4th April, previous day is 715 because for 4th April, previous day is 3rd April, 715, right? So wherever you notice for 8th April, previous day, 7th April is missing, so no previous day cost. For 13th April, 
previous day is 12th april that is 125 and we get that value so one thing here with this previous day function you need to keep in mind only if the previous day is actually there in the data it shows otherwise it's going to leave a blank this is something you need to be careful about but at least this is a way you can get started to find the previous day value right I hope you enjoyed this different kind of video. I will attach the data set. I, so I said, uh, you can try this out, play around, right? Try to find answers and st stories based on this very simple data, but it's actually live data. I'll see you again in another video. Till then, take care. Bye.